نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته This is our first class, the first part in our study of Hadith. Um, we will inshallah be covering uh, some aspects and introduction as well as looking at the importance of Hadith in the Islamic context. Um, but before we delve into it, we have to make certain things uh, clear from the very beginning. There are some misconceptions when it comes to hadith um, that need to be uh, corrected. One major misconception that people have when it comes to hadith is that the Quran and the hadith, when it comes to making things halal and haram, that one is above the other, which is not the case. Again, let me repeat that. The misconception people have or misunderstanding is that they think when it comes to what makes halal and haram, that they are on different levels. To clarify this even more, yes, the Quran is more virtuous than the Hadith, why? Because it is the direct speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas the hadith is also a revelation, but it is revelation that the Prophet sallallahu put in his own words. But when it comes to the sharia, the scholars in Islam, they say that the Quran and the hadith both of them carry the same weight when it comes to making something halal and something haram. Why is this important to clarify? Because there will be some people, even the Prophet sort of mentioned this as a, a prophecy, as something that will come to happen, where you present them a hadith that makes something haram, and they will tell you, no, I want to see where in the Quran this sits. And this is not the right approach. The right approach is to understand the Quran and the Hadith together. Shah will revisit this point later on. What is Hadith? The scholars in Islam, they define Hadith very specific, very specifically. They say Hadith is any statement that the Prophet ﷺ has made that is recorded or any action that the Prophet ﷺ did or anything that the Prophet ﷺ approved of something was done uh, in the presence of the Prophet or the Prophet heard about something and he did not instruct otherwise so he gave his approval and finally, the scholars, they say uh, the, the sifat, the character of the Prophet ﷺ is also part of the hadith. So you might hear uh, a companion of the Prophet ﷺ describing the character of the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, and this is part of hadith and more uh, so part of the sunnah in general. So these four parts is what makes up a hadith. If these parts are not found, then usually the, the, what is being reported is not a hadith, but then it becomes something else, like an other uh, from a companion, a narration from a companion. So, hadith is a, a fundamental aspect in the religion. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that the Quran is uh, revealed and with it a prophet if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to he could have sent down a book to the people and say here you understand it 
But what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? He sent a prophet, he sent a book or relation with a prophet, showing us that the part of the prophethood is very important. It is through the Prophet وسلم, and the Hadith in particular that we understand the Quran. Again, this is a very important concept to understand because the Prophet وسلم, is the authority when it comes to the religion. Uh, the problem that you have with some other religions, what happens is anyone opens up the holy book and everyone has their own interpretation. And they might open up their holy book and they might say, what do you think this means? And a person says, well, I think it means this. And another person says, you know, I feel it means this. But Alhamdulillah, in Islam, things are very clear. The companions used to ask the Prophet وسلم, about the Quran and the Prophet وسلم, would explain it to them and they would record it in turn. Now, there are some main differences between the Hadith and uh, the Quran. One of the major ones that we just mentioned is that the Quran is the speech of Allah directly. Whereas the hadith is the speech of the Prophet But both of them are revelation. Allah tells us in the Quran, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ That the Prophet وسلم, does not speak out of his own will, uh, but when he speaks, he speaks through the wahi, through the revelation. So when the Prophet وسلم, is telling us, this is halal and this is haram, then this is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One good thing that illustrates this is <coughs> a well-known encounter Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu uh, a woman came to him once a woman came to him and uh, she said I heard that you uh, make la'na uh, uh, upon the women who pluck their eyebrows. I hear that you make, uh, that you, uh, you ask Allah's curse to be upon the women who pluck their eyebrows. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, yes. And she, the lady replied, she said, I've read the Quran and I don't find any such verse. No verse in the Quran says that Allah's curse is upon the women who pluck their eyebrows. And then Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he replied, if you had read the Qur'an, you would have found it. Does, not, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not say in the Qur'an, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ That whatever the messenger gives you, then take it. And whatever the messenger tells you, stay away from, then stay away from it. So this shows us that the hadith is a fundamental aspect in the religion. Coming back to the point, another such point is, the scholars, they say, the difference between hadith and Qur'an. <coughs> Just by reciting Qur'an, you get reward. As mentioned by the Prophet wasallam, that every half of the Qur'an, there is a reward. Uh, at, uh, 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 10 rewards, 10 hasanat. Whereas reading the uh, hadith alone, the uh, opinion of the majority of the scholars is that it does not carry that same reward. Okay, But if your intention is to seek and to memorize and to preserve Islam through learning and memorizing the hadith, then that is something else. But just reading the words in hadith the, the, does not bring the same reward. So. These are some of the major points that makes the uh, Quran and the Hadith different. But at the same time, uh, we establish that Hadith is something that is uh, carries the same weight when it comes to making things uh, halal and haram. The history behind Hadith is a very long one. The companions of the Prophet وسلم, during the lifetime of the Prophet وسلم, they used to write down what he would say. Again, this is 
goes against the mis, uh, mis uh, understanding that some people have. They think that the hadith were only written down several hundred years after the death of the Prophet But that is not the case. There were many companions who would write down what they heard from the Prophet And even there was a moment where the Prophet had to intervene and tell some of the companions, don't write down what I say. Because the Prophet did not want people to get confused between what he said and what the Quran was. So you have evidence even during the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ that the companions would write this down. So this notion that the hadith was written down many years after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, this is baseless. Furthermore, <coughs> the hadith were memorized in the same way that the Quran was memorized. And there were some companions that were better than others. Um, can anyone guess which companion memorized the most hadith? Abu Hurairah. Abu And the interesting thing here with Abu Hurairah is if you look at the time that he spent with the Prophet it was very short. Some scholars they say he spent about two years with the Prophet. Yet he is reporting the majority of the ahadith much more than Abu Bakr al-Siddiq who was with the Prophet all the time. And this again, it shows that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes, uh, utilizes people for certain tasks. Uh, so the hadith were written and memorized during the time of the Prophet and they were passed on from generation to generation until it reached the age of uh, the, the tabi'een and specifically the atba tabi'een where you have those great scholars in Islam. What they did was they stepped up and they saw that unfortunately what was happening was that a lot of people became careless about hadith and they started fabricating hadiths. Everyone would say the Prophet ﷺ said so. But they did not have the chain of narrators. If you ask them, where did you hear it from? They would say, oh, I heard it from this person. And there was no way to see which hadith is uh, authentic, correct, and which hadith is not. And this, unfortunately, this understanding of hadith, it brings about the problem that we see uh, today where some people reject hadith completely. This approach to hadith is not the correct approach. Even those who accept hadith as being part of Islam, no one denies that there are fabricated hadiths, that there are many hadith, hadiths that people have made up and lied against the Prophet but that does not mean that the fundamental aspect of the, uh, the, the hadith itself, all of the hadith are to be uh, rejected. What needs to be done is for there to be a science, a, a way to approach these hadith and be able to tell which hadith is weak and which hadith is strong. <coughs> And this is exactly the task that these great scholars did. Yes, uh, the likes of Imam al-Bukhari, uh, the, the likes of Imam Muslim, uh, Abu Dawood, and so on. All these scholars, they took up upon themselves the responsibility of not only collecting the hadiths, because the hadiths, they were scattered around the Muslim world. They would gather them through their travels and then they would put down strict conditions to try to verify the uh, authenticity of these ahadith. Uh, so, inshallah, in our upcoming class, uh, we will uh, shed some more light upon the importance of hadith in Islam, uh, as well as go into the, the sacrifice uh, and uh, the amount of skill and effort and time and dedication went into 
uh, gathering and preserving uh, this uh, wealth of knowledge that the Prophet left, left behind. Uh, and it's interesting where in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to follow the Prophet time and time again we're told that whoever obeys the Prophet he has obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was true at the time of the Prophet and it is still true today so does it make sense to now all of a sudden to throw away all the examples of the Prophet and to say I don't follow hadith at all this does not make sense so this idea that um, hadith and Quran are separate and one can be trusted and the other one cannot be trusted this is something that inshallah will uh, clarify in the upcoming classes um, inshallah we will stop here